Hi, this is Francois and green t-shirt because Excel day. All right, I'm going to talk about pivot table in Excel because it's something that is quite known for many of you. But let's go back to basics. All right, I'm going to take this um, Excel spreadsheet, open it in our app because as you know, a lot of the manipulation we do in Excel, we'd rather not do it in uh, Teams only or in SharePoint. You really have to open the full blown menu or Excel really, so that you can have all the menus. Okay, so here I have a data set, as you can see, lots of data, but nothing really, really um, best practice, I would say. Okay, so for instance, yeah, I have, I don't know, maybe 70 or more uh data let's go to the bottom so control end will take you to the end 102 okay and what i want to do is just to tell me uh well how many people are in this agency and then maybe how many how many of them are in are actually working as salesmen right that's two simple data simple results that i want to do and if you were doing it manually you would have to maybe uh, filter by this column then filter by this column but pivot table to the rescue all right so first thing first we should have this table a little bit better meaning best practice is to define it as a table because surprise but this is not a table it's just a list with lots of cells and it could be as good as csv really separated by comma so comma separated values um it doesn't really help us when it's not a table so i'm going to go to go ahead and click insert i can do pivot table straight away and it's going to look for a table or i can define it as a table so here insert table but as i said excel is quite friendly because it's going to define me as a table so look it says do you want to create a pivot table from a table or range? Yeah, so that's a range. And as I said, it's defining this automatically as a table because he found out that my last and first cell is A1 to all the end Z O O102. So that's correct, right? If I go control and it is definitely O102. But what happened if I had a space here just in the middle let's see how now my pivot table automatic uh, table uh, selection is going to understand yeah it goes from a1 to o97 so always be careful when you do a um, manipulation like this you want to select a range to really create your table manually all right so let's do it manually first i'm going to remove what I did before, go back, so control Z. So let's define it as a table because this time it tells me, is it really up to one, uh, one or two? And then it has header, yes. Always the color changes, but it doesn't matter. It's just for information really. It's just to show that it's a table. What is more important is down at the top here, we have table design. So it's a tab that is a contextual menu, it's called. And we have now the ability to give a table name, which is not the same as the name of your sheet here. Table name. So usually try to have best practice. So TB for table. And then table, I would call it, uh, this one is employee, right? So I'm going to put table M for instance. So that's the name of my table. Um, okay, so now we're ready. Insert, pivot table, and then from table range, and it tells me now, oh great, you want to do it from TBMP. Perfect, even easier. New worksheet or the current one. I would rather say new all the time, otherwise it adds it on top of my data. So that would be very annoying as well. Click OK. Now we have the, the pivot table that is getting ready. So it just gives us this little thing with a drawing, nice. And then very important that this bit on the, on the right should be open. But just for the sake of it, I like to show how to display it again. So let's close it. First thing I do is rename my uh, spreadsheet here 
because I'm going to say pivot table and just pivot table. Uh, what is it? Amp. I up. I up. Amp pivot table. Oh, yes, I don't have the right hand side anymore. But here, turn on the pivot table list. Work. I want to show some fields here. So that's annoying. And believe me, some users are spending a lot of time just trying to get it back. So it's basically here to the very right hand side. As long as you are in pivot table, if you are in the cell, any cell, it's not going to show you the contextual menu. So click on the pivot table area or pane or whatever they call it. I would say design pane. And then on the top you have pivot table analysis and then design to the very right hand side show. And that's where my field list was missing. Great. Now that we have a field list, we can select from my data source what I want to show. So I was saying, for instance, how many are in the agency? So I'm going to select on the left to agency, just select the agency. Brilliant. It's already showing me the list of agencies, which has, which are, by the way, French cities. Um, and then I would like to know, what did I want to know? Maybe the income, right? Let's do that. So I want to select income as the value. I just have to select it and automatically he has put it into the value. So you see here at the bottom value and the row is agency. What about if I want to do it the other way, I could have column as well. So column would be useful if, for instance, um, let's try to find something that is not too many occurrence. For instance, gender. If I select gender and this time I drag it to column, ding, only two because it wasn't a very inclusive data set, to be honest. Um, so we have two column, right? And that shows me my pivot table. So my query earlier was like, show me how many employees in this agency, maybe by gender. That's it. Pivot table does it. So what it does is to take all the columns at the top, to take all the value and just mashing up as long as it finds something in common. So this was the city in common. Oh yeah, and I wanted to do job function, right? So let's go back to my pivot table employee. And I'm going to select now the job for or the, the job function. So I could put it as a value in the row. So if I drag into row under the agency, why not? Then you can see per agency all my job function, how many, in fact, it, was, it wasn't how many, right? It was the income. So that's how we're going to do pivot table. Let's move now my job function inside the column and then get rid of the gender. You just click on gender on the field and you move it away, away outside of the pivot table fields. Ding, it removes it. And now you have our agency by a job function, but I realized that there's actually much more job function than there is agency. So it's not really easy to read as column. So let's do the other way. I'm going to invert. I'm putting agency here and job function as rows. Oh, now it's a bit better. Okay. So interesting, but it's only showing me the income. So that's kind of okay. If I wanted to know that in industry here we have a lot of editor and they are the higher space whatever but it's not really interesting in this data set so instead of the sum of the income maybe i just want to know how many have an income so i click on the uh, value field settings and i'm going to count so it will count of income but in my case i would say person Here we go. Now we have one person. Well, this is very low uh, data set. One person per job. Yeah, that makes sense actually, because you have one person doing a job inside an agency. So per agency, we don't want to have too many director of communication, director of finance, etc. However, we can have lots of uh, salespeople in the same agency. So that's why we have some uh, some higher number here. Okay, so that was again a very quick intro on pivot table. I hope it was useful. 
Next, I can continue and show pivot chart because it's really not rocket science. And I think everybody should just play with it and see how the story is going to come up from, uh, from our data. This is Francois. I hope it was useful. Please like, subscribe, etc. And send me messages. Bye.